Hello, I am Matthias and welcome to a new tutorial. First I have to correct something from the previous video. Thanks to Pierre Sosa for giving me the right hint, again. I was so focused on the real-time fade thingy that I didn't even consider that the zero crossings button isn't related to fades. But of course it's the option we had already before in a new look. Check for zero crossings is of course related to making edits to audio clips like cuts and trimming, where zero crossings play of course an important role to avoid clicks. Sorry for this confusion. Second, I forgot to mention two new additions which came later to real-time fades and crossovers. If you choose to disable seeing the gain preview for clip gain and fades, you can make them visible temporarily by hovering over the audio clip and pressing Alt on your keyboard. We have now a keyboard shortcut to toggle the Show Fade Editing Controls button on and off. And this is Shift and F. By the way, for those who wonder and partly making jokes as if that what I showed so far would be all what's new, I just want shortly respond to some comments here lately. We still have to go through about 40 other changes and new additions which are already included in this beta cycle. And we are still not at the end of getting new versions with new stuff included. And even if something sounds very minor, these are very welcome changes users were begging for a long time and which will improve workflow and work speed tremendously. Are there many changes other DAWs have already since ages? Yes, many of them are. So what? This isn't a sign for FL Studio being a toy or isn't worth it. I am guilty of this as well for sure, but this dick comparison between DAWs is at the very end senseless. Yes, FL Studio lacks of some basic stuff other had since long time. But on the other side, we had since ages stuff others didn't have for a long time or even still do not have it until now. Like the piano roll tools, Euclidean rhythms for patterns, a complete full featured audio editor, exporting project bones, advanced MIDI routing and thousands of other things worth mentioning. For me the biggest difference is that after the team got most of the background work done to lift the code to the next century, we are starting now, or better, have already started, to get all this lacking stuff bit by bit, while many other companies just refuse to change their code to make new things possible. Another great advantage, because some new additions are already tested in and out, the devs can have a look how to improve features. Just a quick example from the latest editions. There is no other door where the user can decide if he wants to see clip gain or fade preview or not. If this is implemented in a different DAW, it's always like this, period. Perhaps it's a good idea to see it as an advantage that so many things now get implemented later and it's better to see it as a great chance to get bread and butter stuff better implemented, even if they were missing for a long time. ImageLine has put together a crew now which will blow your minds in future, I can assure you. Just stay a bit patient and you will see an update cycle from now on which will let come true your biggest dreams. And this I'm saying as a normal user. I'm not affiliated with ImageLine in any way. With this having said, let's dive into some next examples which are basically minor changes but with a huge impact. We all know, or at least should know, about the shopping features built into audio clips. I could play around with these all day long. I just wish they would do some more presets for them. The same is now possible for automation clips. 
Just imagine the possibility of how this can spice up simple automation curves for making variations to your existing stuff, for example for breaks and fills. As if this wouldn't be already enough, and because many users claimed for this, we can now merge automation clips differently. In the versions before, there was no possibility to merge automation clips where one didn't have a breakpoint at the end. Respectively, when you got clips with the LFO engaged. These times are gone now. In our example here, when I hover over the different segments, you can hardly see any start points and not a single endpoint. Nevertheless, they have made a new algorithm to perform what they call lossy merge, with a user definable sensitivity to get more points or more curved shapes to recreate what was present in the chopped clips before. Let's go back and enable the LFO, which create a funny shape with our shops. Here I better back off the sensitivity a bit. Please note that you see the change just after releasing the mouse button. So no more problems with merging any kind of automation constellation anymore. But that's not all. I got here the pattern clip for a good reason. In the automation editor we got a new button now. Convert target to events in the current pattern. After having got the improved algorithm before to better convert event data to automation clips, now we can do the opposite and convert any automation clip to event data if we need just a clip-based automation and don't want to clutter our arrangement with too many tracks and clips. Or if we just want to use the next new function, chop pattern clips. Of course, this not just works with event data, but with nodes too. Let's say you've got a little boring MIDI pattern. And you want to enhance it, but you don't know how to move on. Chopping can give at least some ideas you could expand later on. From more subtle changes... to something completely new, for example for a break. And I must say, the results aren't bad at all. The icing on the cake and a good proof that ImageLine is really on a very good way when implementing new features, everything works with multi-selections. And this is a real great way to add the same rhythmic variation with one action to multiple clips and sources. It sounds so minor, but has got a huge impact and make this feature to a huge creativity booster. I think that's enough for today. I let you now alone with your imagination what you could do with these new additions and changes. I wish you a great time and lots of fun with the latest beta. Stay tuned and thank you for watching.